Hey everyone, I want to talk all about why it's so important to decrease our complaining and change the way we talk about OCD. This is a really important video. It's something I have to explain to many people on one-to-one -one calls, uh, in webinar services, in the WhatsApp groups, and just kind of friends of mine in real life when we're talking about things. And if they ask for my perspective, you know, whether they're going through a breakup, they're going through something that's going wrong in their life and business. I explain to them why it's so important to change the way we view things, such as the way we talk about things. I can't stand it. This is the worst thing ever. Why that's a big overgeneralization, why it sets the stone or sets the tone, sets the tone. Sorry, it's late at night. Sets the tone for just an unrealistic expectations about what you're going through. Before I go any further, please subscribe, hit that like button, comment down below. It's really important to start implementing this into your life as soon as possible because this is something I see that holds many people back and this goes far beyond the boundaries of OCD and anxiety recovery. If you want to help, if you want us to help you break down your fears or you want to know more about OCD recovery, please email us at info at ocdrecovery.com and we will get back to you to a in a timely fashion. Now, when I was really stuck with OCD, I was complaining a lot. I would spend the majority of my day complaining about how unfair life was, how I didn't deserve this, how I didn't want to live anymore. That was a vent and compulsion. I would constantly say to my wife and to Rob and other people, I hate my life. I don't want to live. I want to kill myself. I would think this all the time when I was in the mental hospital. That was really the number one thing I thought about. And it was a really dark place in my life. If you haven't watched my recent mental health hospital video, please go back about, you know, 10 videos and watch that. It's really good covering the fear of going to mental hospitals and really good about the experience I went through and everything I learned from that. So when you first become latched with OCD, your number one goal is to educate yourself and learn about the practicality about OCD. Sometimes it takes people years to find that. Some people now, because of the amount of content we do, if they've been stuck for one or two months, they kind of go on the YouTube and let's say type in, can't stop thinking about my blinking and my videos come up and they watch that and they say, wow, I can really resonate with this guy. This guy really seems to know what he's talking about. And that's because I had all, all sorts of forms of sensory motorosity, blinking, breathing, swallowing, saliva, your heartbeat, all that stuff, which I had to realize I had to live my life and let those sensations play out, even if it needed to be for the rest of my life. Whilst changing the way I viewed those sensations, that was a really important thing. But at the time, I would say, I can't stand it. You know, my favorite phrases were, I can't stand it. This is the worst thing ever. This is terrible. Life isn't worth living. And although those little tiny phrases don't seem like they matter, the more we say them, we drop little tiny stones into a bucket. And that metaphorical bucket is called the bucket of low frustration tolerance. And as that bucket fills up and goes from two pounds to five pounds to 100 pounds to 10,000 pounds, the amount you've substantiated your suffering in low frustration tolerance seems almost impossible for you to get better. When I talk to anyone in my life, whether it's an OCD or an anxiety sufferer, family members, I hear them use the term, I can't stand it very loosely. And when I actually show them that, why that statement is so stupid, you actually can stand it. So you have to think about the, the stupidity of the statement, I can't stand it, because it is a very stupid statement. When you're in, a, in line to get coffee, and you say, I can't stand when these people uh, hold up the line. You're not being honest with the reality of life. You're, you can stand it. You just don't like standing it. That People say to me, that's semantics. It doesn't matter. If it didn't matter, then everyone on this planet wouldn't be so emotionally disturbed. So it matters a lot more than you think. And people don't really want to take the effort to change that because it takes a conscious awareness. I can't stand it. This is the worst thing ever. My dogs are barking out there. That's another, this is a great example. People will say, oh, I can't stand when my dogs bark. It's so annoying. It's the most annoying thing. These are all massive overgeneralization, black and white statements that when you use them over and over and over again, that's the way you see the world. I use a simple statement. If you walk outside in a rainstorm, let's say you live in some of the Pacific Northwest here in America where it rains a lot, Oregon, Washington, and every day when it rains, you walk out and you say, the rain sucks, fuck the rain, it's the worst thing ever, I can't stand it, it's terrible, blah, 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 the traffic's terrible, I'm late to work. After two years, your, your annoyance of rain will be such a low tolerance, and it's important to highlight that this is a behavioral weakness that you're doing to yourself. The reason why it's so important to realize that is Jim Rohn, the late Jim Rohn, Tony Robbins' mentor said, the number one thing you can do for your life when it comes to the personal responsibility is take responsibility for the things in your life that you can and cannot change. The things that you can't change, work at accepting them, and the things that you could change, start making small steps to change them, changing the way you talk about things. 
So think about the fears that you have, whether it's harm OCD, existential OCD, solipsism, and start thinking about the way you talk about those fears. Think about it. How often do I say the words, I can't stand it? How often do I say this is terrible? And start to slowly and methodically change those verbiages into this is tough, but it's not the worst thing ever. You don't have to talk to yourself all day long like this. A balance is needed, but you could start with those small minor changes. And I'll give you a great example. So some of the things you could say, so let's say you're in the, and you're not going to get this right off the bat. You're going to fail many times. So let's say you're in traffic. Most people say traffic sucks. It's the worst thing ever. This brings down your frustration tolerance, which a lot of people leads to anger, especially in road rage. You could say, hey, look, it's bad or unfortunate that I'm stuck in this traffic jam, but it's not awful. I can still enjoy the music or still enjoy just this, my scenery while I'm stuck in traffic. Um, maybe you get, <clears throat> you lose your job and you have to find another job. It's not something you like right away. Hey, I don't like it, but I can stand it. I can still enjoy many new things at this job and take meaning from that. This is personal meaning that you design, not universal meaning, because there's probably no such thing as universal meaning. I've broken that down in many things. People say there's a universal principle of being a good person. I don't think that's true. I just think that many people believe there's a universal principle of being a good person, but there's no way to substantiate that with evidence. So it's really important to, to say that because that's what holds a lot of people back. Um, RBT principles, stoicism, these are, these are scientific principles of rationality about life, why there is no universal fairness, why there's no universal deservingness. And those are other little things too that add to the low frustration tolerance. When you say, you know, it's really easy to do this when you're emotionally charged. I can't imagine what it would be like to lose a child to a school shooting. But because of the way I practice my life, and don't get me wrong, I would probably lose my absolute shit and I would be distraught and probably spiral into a depression. I could probably come out the other side and realize, just like I did when I lost my father to cancer and all the other things that happen in life and atrocities. And I, I think life is extremely unfair. I wish there was universal fairness, but obviously there's not. Kids die of cancer. It's the one I use a lot. There's atrocities and tragedies all over the world, et cetera, et cetera. So watch this video again if you think you're doing this a lot. Remember that I can't stand it. This is the worst thing ever. This is a really important place to start. Small strategic checks, small strategic checks in changing the way you talk about your OCD is key. Thank you so much for watching. As always, please comment down below. I love engaging with the OCD and anxiety community. That's why I make videos after a long day when I'm really tired. And I think, you know what? Why not jump the video on, make some content for people. This is a good topic to cover. I don't usually cover it directly. I do add it into small bits. And if you want us to help you break down your fears with OCD and anxiety recovery, please email us at info at OCDrecovery.com and we will get back to you in a timely fashion. Thank you so much and have a great day.